Hi there, Jamie, editing Jamie here, and I saw I didn't do any sort of intro for this video, so forgive me, my friend's here helping me, this is little Jay, and in this video I'm going to do an up potting and planting out, so if you're interested in any of that, please stay tuned for the following, bye bye! Alright, so I went and got me a chair, went and filled me up a grow bag full of soil. It's just from that bin, that same Kellogg stuff. And I've got my pots, and I'm going to go ahead and fill a bunch of these pots. And I will take you along with me. If you're like me, you've probably seen this done a hundred times. But sometimes we just like to watch others garden and do what they're doing while we can't do for whatever reason that is. Either we're too tired from a long day at work or we just don't have the skills necessary yet and we need the encouragement or whatever the reason is. Sometimes we just like to see gardening. I know it makes me feel good so I'll take you along. I just absolutely love these. I think they're two and a half inch cups from Bootstrap Farmer. And you see I have the trays too. Yes, they're expensive, but I got these trays last year. And there's, they're absolutely perfect still. I got them, the trays last year for Mother's Day. And then I've gotten all the little rainbow cups for pre-Mother's Day. Because I desperately needed them. Because all my other ones were just crapping out. I reused and reused and reused until they broke apart. And I've seen these on other YouTube channels, and I just love all the color. We love color here. So anything with more color is better. Alright, I think I'm going to take you along, up potting, or repotting, separating, whatever you want to call it, a few of these plants. And then that might be it for today. We'll see how it goes. Alright, so I'll probably speed this up a little bit. Maybe not too crazy. Or I'll just leave it in real time and you can skip through however you want to do it. Don't bother me. And while I'm at this, I figured I'd grab my little handy dandy check and make sure they're growing bag that we went over in another video I can link that so you can see what I'm talking about if you don't know and check things while I'm here because this is overwhelming sometimes and I'm gonna just fill them up most of the way if I need to remove I'll remove if I need to add I'll add to relabel all of these 
And I don't want to forget what's in those, so I wonder, since they're dry, oh, look at that. And I'll just put them in the one that has the label. And as you hear, Mr. Fix-It is fixing. So, for the rest of this, I will definitely at least speed up a little bit and put on some music for you. And then I'll come back to you in a little bit. So here's all the okra babies we have, and like I showed you, this one has a label, and I can see ones coming up right in there. So I'm going to go ahead and move these two over, and then I'll only have two instead of four that I'm watching to wait till they see. And we have 16 okra plants as of now. And I don't know if that'll be enough. My goal is to grow enough okra for us for a year this year. And we shall see. I know we did pretty good. And we only had like four or five last year. But that, that went quick. We eat a lot of okra. And as I was sitting here doing this, I was thinking to myself, this is another project that I didn't know I was learning from my grandfather. <laughs> He loved to grow longhorn okra, and I loved to watch him water what looked like giant tree stars. If you know what that is, let me know in the comment below, because that's all I saw my grandpa growing. And then I knew it was an amazing addition to the gumbo, so that's just special memories for me with my grandfather. On to the next bit. Ooh-wee! I hope all of y'all have better balance than I do because y'all are teetering. I decided I'm going to go ahead and organize these. Oh, look. Can you see? That is a red Malabar spinach. And I am so excited to see that coming up. I have an idea on what I want to do with these extra this year the extra plants and since they love heat I'm going to use those plants to try to shade some plants that struggle in heat this year specifically my tomatoes and I'll take you along for that project as well alright so I have the ones that don't need to be separated in here and then I have the ones I'm separating and up -potting into this one so I don't need that tray anymore let me see what else we need to up pot and I'll be right back all right so I got some things set up it's gonna be pretty much the same process I don't think I want to separate these I might separate a few of these we'll see and I ran and grabbed my tags got some cups filled and I have sweet banana peppers that are way past needing to be separated and roselle hibiscus if you don't know what this is and you've had hibiscus tea or yamica drink in mexico and i know the macons have a pink drink don't mind mr fix it well that my friend is what roselle hibiscus is and I'll try to add a picture of what the pods look like. It becomes a massive bush and produces tons of beautiful flowers. And then you collect the pods. 
and you process those. Maybe we can do those together if you're interested in that. And I'm going to just get all these separated and you're welcome to watch. So I have these two different ones labeled with my name on it and all of that because I'm growing extra for my plant swap that's coming up in a few weeks. So I'll be able to share these with somebody else who maybe really wants some or has never grown them or misses them from their home country. I never know. I get to meet all kinds of people there. So we'll go ahead and get a couple of these stuck in the dirt. We'll have to get that other one planted in there a little bit better. And I don't want these sitting out too long. I really don't know how well these transplant. I feel like I did transplant them last year into the ground. Cause I just can't imagine growing them for, from seed where I planted them at last year. There's no way. My dogs are lunatics and I'm sure they would have trampled them. But we want these to stand up. So you bury them just enough to get them to stand up. And then that's it for those. And now I'll do the same thing with mine. I'm going to do three in case I murder one. I still have probably half a gallon of the Roselle from last year. And I tell you what, we've been going through it since everybody's been sick at the house. Thankfully, I never got it. I took care of three people for the last couple weeks. One had walking pneumonia and the rest had up a respiratory infection. It was no fun. But thankfully everybody's feeling better. All right. So I will make me an extra label for both of these. Although, since it's not a big section, I just put on the ochre one on one end and one on the other. But since there's only three that I have, I want to make sure I remember what they are. I'm going to do that now before I forget. These are amazing, by the way. Look at the colors. I don't know how well they hold up. I'm assuming they'll do pretty good. They seem pretty sturdy. I usually reuse labels. But I started running out of my reused labels. So I had to order some. We've been looking and looking for somebody to toss out mini blinds. And have had no luck. And I did get these on Amazon. So if I remember, I'll try to link them. Hopefully this little plant lives because if it does, then I'll have one extra to, sell, to share with someone else. Because I think I'm only going to plant two. Because they're huge. But they're really nice. I might just plant one, I don't know yet. All right, let's do these next. These are just banana peppers, sweet banana peppers. They're my husband's favorite. So I'm really glad they did good this year because they didn't do good at all last year. Same thing with these. Just tear them apart lightly. And try to get root with both plants like that. And then you take your little soil, go back and forth. And you 
don't want to bury the papers deeper than they were. We want to just bury them to where they were. And if you didn't know, when you plant your pepper plants, it should be about 12 to 18 inches apart. They like to hold hands. So they like it when they're full size for their leaves to touch the other leaves of other peppers. And it looks like they're holding hands. I wonder if it's only the sweet peppers that like to hold hands. That's a really bad joke, but they are super sweet. Maybe they're sweeter if they get to hold hands. Don't mind me. Got the tray nearly filled, so I'm gonna stop and put some of this fish fertilizer 511 organic in my water jug. I don't accurately measure it anymore, it's just about two glugs, and that makes it half strength ish. Once I fill this all the way up, I'll be right back. I'm going to try to carefully pour a bunch of this water in so these can be soaking up some nutrients and some water while I finish. And that should be about good because we still have to put more plants in the rest of the way. We have seven spots left. I'm going to try to fit these in there and give these enough room without having to separate all of them. Because I need to maximize my space in my trays and I have limited space on my table. Try to keep these labeled as well because I have bouquet, dill bouquet, and ducat dill. Which I've never grown either of these, but I've been having horrible luck growing dill, so I decided to try something different. Okay, so this would be two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got two other plants over there, so if I can just have to split this one, then that would be great. If I have to split them later, then oh well that's fine too. I just want them to be happy in the meantime. And these are a little bit more tender because you're going to knock them around. Especially if you did like me and you over sewed intentionally but over sewed so you got lots of little bunches coming up. in this zone let me know what your favorite dill is what variety works best for you because this is just trial and error this year to 
and see who survives, which is a lot of it. I think that's part of what I like about growing things. A lot of it is just science and experiments and testing out things. So if you are told, oh, that'll never work, I give you permission to try it. Because just because it doesn't work for somebody else don't mean it's not going to work for you. Alright. I'm trying to be really good about labeling. I'm usually pretty good. But I forget as well. And we are going to reuse this label and discard that one. That can be the sacrificial offering. Now I've got two more things over here. Um, I don't have a whole lot of hopes for this. This one looks dead and this is like really dry i guess that tray got missed during my last couple weeks and there's a teeny tiny one trying to grow there i don't know if it's salvageable because this is a green tomatillo and you need at least two plants and i planted lots in hopes that i would get lots and do better this year on tomatillos but I might have to re-sew those. I think I'll wait. I'm gonna hold off on that. But this is a long purple eggplant. So I'll re-sew those and see if I can get it caught back up. And if not, we'll just have to try again next year. This is just long purple eggplant and we'll give it a little happy home to go and sit in. I need some eggplant recipes, not battered. Anything battered. We don't need a lot of flour and things like that. But I need ideas. I do like to do it in a lasagna instead of noodles. All right, long purple eggplant. Alright, so I got some things cleaned up and rearranged. I was thinking about uh, potting some of these, but they're so teeny tiny. I'm not going to bother. I'll just keep an eye on them. <coughs> Good morning, Leo! Y'all, it's afternoon. He don't know what time it is. So, some of these are getting their first true leaves. And I'll probably separate them if they get a little bit bigger and bring extras to the plant trade and if not we'll just stick them all in somewhere that's kind of our theme I'm trying to find these and replant but I'm gonna replant them in here I don't know I don't know if that's mildew on there but I don't want to risk it so I'll just chuck this stuff out and replant in some new stuff but like I was saying I need more than one of these so I'm gonna go ahead and re-sew these I need to get this wet look it's rock hard so I can even dig in there to plant I don't know how that one got so dry but we'll get that sorted Alright, so I went ahead and put it in my trays where it has the fish fertilizer soaking my other babies. And then I just poured a little bit more of that fish fertilizer over top. And hopefully that's enough, oh yeah, for me just to get a little bit in here. And then when I'm done, it can go sit in there and soak up all it needs. I'm going to rip this out because that's not going to do nothing. The top of it's damaged and then we'll try to get 
I'm kind of scared to move that one. That one might be okay, but I don't know. We have four spaces, so that should be good enough. And if this doesn't work, there's always next year. And I have a ridiculously long growing season, so I could technically re-sow again. And these are teeny tiny little seeds. And they take 7 to 14 days to germinate and 65 days to maturity. So that's 7 to 14 plus 65. So if I do re -sow, I just have to add those numbers together. See how close I am to the frost date because I want to give it time to grow tomatillos. And I don't know if they come in flushes like tomatoes. I'm just pulling some hard pieces out. If they come in flushes like tomatoes, or most tomatoes, or if they all try to ripen at once. I had some one year, but they were teeny tiny. They were absolutely ridiculous. So I just left them on and just was happy to see them grow. All right, so we got that taken care of. They're from MI Gardener. Obviously they germinate and they'll grow if you take care of them. Hey there, Jamie here. Um, we just got done up potting and taking care of some of the little seedling babies. And I talked to you a little bit about the jicama. I want to show you what I'm going to do with it. I decided not to up pot it. I've never successfully grown it and I'd really like to grow it. But I think I'm going to plant it out. And I'll give you a little update on this bed and some things we planted earlier. Discuss the jicama. I thought I was going to up pot, but I think I'm going to just plant them out. They're strong looking, so I'll give them, that'll give them their best chance. Plus, if they start growing tubers before I catch them, then they can just stay where they are. Sorry about the weed eater. Somebody far off is weed eating and it sounds pretty loud to me, but that's what we have today. So I'm going to go ahead and plant them out here, and I think I'm going to plant them here. That way if they do grow, I can put some sort of trellis here to hold them up, or they can just grow out of the bed and fall over however they want to do. I'll have to research and see what will be best, or experiment. So all of this space over here is just waiting for my peppers. I'm going to plant as many peppers as I can all the way through here. So I think I'll have enough room to put some in here. And if not, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to reclaim some of this in-ground bed that we haven't um, built any more raised beds in. So let me get you set up and I'll show you what they look like going in. If you don't know, this is a tuber. Well, it grows a tuber. And I was just speaking to some friends. Actually, it was a client's parents. And they said they slice it up fresh with a little lime juice and some tahini and eat it like that. Look at that. That one's coming up way late. That germination on these is spread so far. We've got some like that, and then we have some like that. All of these were planted at the same time, so that's interesting. But anyway, that's how they eat it. And we cut it up into French fry shape and put it in the air fryer and make French fries out of it. I'm going to take these bigger ones and stick them down here.
Um, they're about five, six inches apart. That should be plenty enough space for how big they can get. Uh. Hi, lover. Mr. Fix it still out there fixing. Alright, this is the next one. I'm just kind of going down from height. That way, if the ones that aren't so big don't make it, and the ones that are big make it, I have them all in one area, not just spread out. Not that that's really going to make any difference, because these could live and those could die. But that's the thought. And there's a root from one of them. Yeah, I think that's going to make a really nice looking um, grinder. Oh yeah? I love the... Uh -huh. Hi everyone! <laughs> well, I hope it works out for you, love. Alright, and we'll stick our little label in here away from the sun so I can actually read it later on. And I still have some of that nitrogen rich liquid fertilizer so i'm going to go ahead and give them some of that to help them along because they still need to grow upright for now Ooh, just enough man couldn't have done that if i tried so they still need to have nitrogen for a little while And then once they get bigger, we'll stop giving them nitrogen. That way they can grow their tubers. So, wish me luck on that. If you have any tips about growing jicama in Texas, hot, humid. Which should be fine, because they grow them in Mexico. If you have any tips, let me know. I've not had the greatest success. But we'll move on and show you some other things. Of this area is exploding that's that uh, Michelini cabbage and I'd say this one that one's just about ready to harvest but I'm gonna probably take some leaves and some leaves and some leaves and just throw them into things and what is that you see that I don't even know what that is, but that looks like it's something planted. That could be a weed. I have a weed that came in my horse manure. But this is lovely red Asian mustard green, and boy, it is spicy. And then we re-sewed some of the little babies of the different ones. That's a red mustard. There's a tiny little bit of red on it. And then some more of this cabbage. And then what do we plant here? daikon radish absolutely love those and this area over here so far so good check the little bottoms that's that spaghetti squash i told you i'm trying to hide in here some cucumbers all along there and then another spaghetti squash there because we have vine borers super bad and then these are all the radishes that we planted together and they probably could use some fertilizer not nitrogen though nitrogen will just make all the tops grow which it looks to me like they this horse manure is probably full of nitrogen so that's what that looks like the leeks are still doing good and then I know I showed y'all at the end of the bed in my trough. Those are how big the cabbages are. And I know 
There should probably only be two of those in here, but we'll see what happens. That way if one fails, we can just feed it to the chickens and we'll still have another one left. We'll just see how it works, another experiment. That's not it. You see all this blank space? I can't leave it. While we're out here, gardening and touring and planting the jicama, let's plant some more food. We got the space, we might as well use it. This is the bok choy, purple bok choy. We're gonna plant that. And some more of this stuff. Because all these little radishes, well those little radishes aren't going to take much longer. So I figure we could get a couple rows of this bok choy in. And then maybe a short row of the cabbage michelini. Now I have this from two different places. Dollar seed, so we'll see how they do. Charles house chaos sometimes. No mine is. Don't bother me none. And I'm not even seeing how far apart these are growing because I don't let them get very big anyway. When they're young and tender, they're the best. And you can stir fry them. I wonder if they could make little tiny kimchi. Because they're kind of like cabbage. Could be an interesting thing to try. Not that I'm that great at making kimchi, but oh, I love some cucumber kimchi. We'll have to make that together. Let me know if that sounds interesting. Because hopefully we'll have a whole bunch of cucumbers really soon. Oh, look at that guy. That might be a cutworm. He's going to the chickens. Just get those watered in and fingers crossed everything goes well and we have extra extra cabbage and I think whenever these come out officially come out if the pick in the outside leaf doesn't work for them to regrow then I'll pull them and then I'll backfill this little area and re-sow them again and see just how many times I can keep these growing so we can have a whole bunch All right, everybody, thanks for spending your time with me. If you like seeing videos like this where you get little updates here and there, and if you have any useful information, please comment, like, subscribe, share, help me grow this channel. Um, I'd like to make some sort of community for those of us who like to grow and help each other out. And find yourself a plant swap or a seed swap. Or something like that to get you started even if you don't have much a lot of times they'll help you out plant people are really giving and sharing so tell me what you're up to in your yard in your garden let me know how you like these type of videos and I'll see you on the next one bye bye